Thanks for your time. That number today, what do you what do you make of it? There are six thousand less jobs, but still not as high as what most people and economists had predicted. Yeah, well, the Treasury forecast it falls. Uh, the unemployment rate was forecast to be higher than it is now, and we're pleased, of course. Seven hundred eighty thousand. A new job since the election of the Albanese government, a record for any government in a two-year period or less. Uh, so we're very happy that we're seeing people employed. Uh, the economy's ticking over well. Inflation is moderating, uh, and that's a good thing. Uh, and, of course, uh, we want to make sure that we continue uh, to deliver uh, to uh, Australians, including providing cost of living, uh, uh, easing cost of living pressures where we can, and, of course, we're, right now, Kieran, we're in the process, the Treasurer and the Finance Minister and others are in the process of, of forming the next budget to be announced in a month. Um, and, and a lot of work's been obviously put into that so that we can continue to manage the economy well. Is it possible that you can get that soft landing where unemployment stays at these really record lows, but inflation does get back into the target band? I think there are indicators showing the economy softening. Ultimately, it's up to the Reserve Bank to make a decision uh, in relation to uh, rates. Uh, however, I'm sure they'll be, under, they'll be considering that. Um, there, are, there are signs of, a, of the economy softening, but, again, we welcome any unemployment figure in our circumstances where we have a three in front of it is a good thing. Uh, we want to see people gainfully employed. Real wages are... But we going. also want to see rates. Yeah, but we don't... Not, rates not, cut, we don't We don't want to sacrifice workers to see that, but what we want to do is manage the economy. I think there are signs of some softening, but inflation, most importantly, is moderating uh, and you're seeing unemployment uh, maintained relatively low. That's good. And the, ultimately, the Reserve Bank will make the decision in relation to rates. Uh, and uh, I'm sure they'll think about that very carefully because people, of course, are, uh, are finding uh, things in finding it tough in, in, and uh, we want to make sure we can ease that pressure that's on household budgets. Yeah, so while while many economists would say the unemployment rate needs to be higher for the RBA to move, you, you're not in a position and you could never be in a position where you're cheering on job losses. That's the that's the fundamental point, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and I, I think the there's a revision on the orthodox view that you have to see unemployment uh, rise to see if, uh, in, in interest rates fall. I think the Reserve Bank will take into account a series of factors across the economy. Um, and uh, and I'm you know obviously ultimately they'll make that decision. But what we'll do as a government is continue to manage it. Obviously we believe that surplus is within our reach, but it's something that's it's not easy. Uh, we we've delivered the first surplus uh, in this country in 15 years, and I know the treasurer and the finance minister, prime minister, and others are working hard to make sure we manage it. The, well. the IMF just released its fiscal monitor, which had the government up to second now in terms of. Uh, the, the G20 yeah. and the strength of the the bottom line. But when you know, mm. when you've got a strong bottom line, there'll be a lot of pressure on the government to deal with other things like the, the jobless payments, the unemployment benefits, things like uh, student debt, those matters. There'll be pressure on the government to say, do more on cost of living, particularly those with the least. There's always pressure on governments, understandably for people who might be doing it tough, but we weigh up everything in the national interest. And, for example, I think we've done well in providing relief, whether it's been energy uh, price relief, whether it's been cheaper medicines, fee-free TAFE uh, in my portfolio. We've removed cost barriers to education and training. Uh, you know, those things are important, but we've done it in a way having regard to making sure there was no overall impact on inflation adversely. And I think we've managed that well. And as you say, the IMF has come out and said we are now. We've moved from 14th to 2nd amongst G20 countries in terms of managing the budget. That was because of the $100 billion turnaround uh, the, at the last budget. Uh, things are not as... E I think things are tough and challenging, but I do think we're working well to continue to manage the economy. But the IMF and, is also warning look, about yeah. nations like ours so dependent on China to continue to shore up your... Your, ba your, your balance, the bottom line of the, the budget, because if China goes off, which is a real chance that that will continue over the next 12 to 24 months, the government needs to have that in, in place for yeah. a rainy day, a bit of a buffer. And we take into account all of those things, the effects on revenue, uh, you know, the impact on decisions we make that may impact on inflation. All of those things are taken into account. And, of course, in a month's time, you'll see us deliver a budget and I think we'll do very well. I know you've got to get a plane. We'll let you go. <laughs> Minister for Skills and Training, Brendan O'Connor, appreciate it. Thanks, Kieran.